students, welcome to an English language lesson. This lesson is for Form 5. The theme is People and Culture. We are doing Unit 12. The topic is Happy to Help. Let's look at the contents. For this lesson, we have Learning Standards, Introduction, Speaking, Writing, Reload and the Progress Review. First, let's look at the learning standards. We have the main skills, speaking 2.2.1, use formal and informal registers appropriately in most familiar and some unfamiliar contexts. Speaking 2.4.1, explain the main points of an idea or argument. Writing 4.2.4, use formal and informal registers appropriate to the target audience in most familiar and some unfamiliar situations. And writing 4.2.2, spare written work on a range of text types with reasonable accuracy. Let's look at the complementary skills. Speaking 2.4.1, explain the main points of an idea or argument. Speaking 2.3.1, Keep interaction going in discourse level exchanges by paraphrasing and rephrasing appropriately. Writing 4.1.4, express and respond to real and or imagined opinions and feelings. And writing 4.2.4, use formal and informal registers appropriate to the target audience in most of the familiar or unfamiliar situations. Dear students, let's start our lesson. Look at this word, philanthropist. What does it mean? A philanthropist is someone who engages in philanthropy, donating their time, money, and or reputation to charitable causes. The term may apply to any volunteer or to anyone who makes a donation, but the label is most often replied applied to those who donate large sums of money or who make a major impact through their volunteering, such as a trustee who manages a philanthropic organization or one who establishes and funds a foundation. Dear students, here we have six greatest philanthropists by amount of money in US dollars. So these are their names. This is taken from Wikipedia. The following table orders the greater philanthropies by the estimated amount given to charity corresponding to US dollars. So here we have Jamsetji Tata, Bill Gates, Warren Buffet, George Soros, Azim Pranji, and Li Ka Singh. So look at the six pictures. Can you guess? Which picture is for which philanthropist? So the first picture is Warren Buffet. Number two is Lee Ka Singh. Number three is Azim Premji. Number four is Jamset Ji Tata. And we have George Soros. And the last one is Bill Gates. Jamset Ji Nasawanji Tata. 3 March 1839 19 May 1904, was an Indian pioneer industrialist who founded the Tata Group, India's biggest conglomerate company. He established the city of Jamshedpa. He founded what would later become the Tata Group of Companies. Jamsetji Tata is regarded as the legendary father of Indian industry. He was so influential in the world of industry that Jawaharlal Nehru referred to Tata as a one man planning commission. Jamsetji Tata topped the rank for being first in the Huron philanthropists of the century 2021 by total donations of nearly $102.4 billion with the start of his key endowments way back in 1892. Jamsetji donated generously mainly for education and healthcare. Dear students, let's start the speaking lesson. Dear students, for speaking, you have to ask and answer the questions with a partner. Have you ever done any voluntary work? What sort of volunteering appeals to you? Are there groups of people in your area who you think don't receive enough support? 
Are you a member of any local organisations for young people? Do you think there are enough things for young people to do in your area? So let's look at the first question. Have you ever done any voluntary work? What sort of volunteering appeals to you? You can say, yes, I have. I volunteered to clean an orphanage last year. I prefer to help orphans as I feel that they are young. They need the most help. Number two, are there groups of people in your area who you think don't receive enough support? Yes, I do. The orphans. They are placed in a centre but it does not receive enough aid from the public. Are you a member of any local organisation for young people? Yes, I'm a member of the school charity club and also the district Leo club. Do you think there are enough things for young people to do in your area? No, I don't, as most young people are often in their homes or in some tuition centres. The local council should organise more events for youth to participate in, like sports events, of course, which are fun and attractive to youngsters. For exercise 2, fill in the gaps to complete what you might say if you don't hear 1 and 2 or don't understand 3 and 4 what someone says. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Could you repeat that, please? Could you say that again? Can you explain or can you tell me why you said that? Because I don't quite understand. Sorry, but I'm not sure what you mean or meant by that. Now for exercise 3, work with a partner. The local council is threatening to close the youth centre because not enough young people attend. You think your area needs a youth centre, so you want to prevent its closure. Here are some ideas that might help to keep it open. First, talk to each other about how effective you think each idea would be. Then, decide which two ideas you would put into practice. Use the language bank to help you. Let's read the download notes. It's important that you interact with your partner in this type of task. Therefore, if you don't hear or understand something your partner says, ask him or her politely to repeat, rephrase, or explain it. So let's look at the um, map here. How can we keep the youth centre open? So here there are a few suggestions. One, make an announcement at local schools. Two, start a Facebook page for your Youth Centre 3. Suggest new activities to attract members. 4. Write a letter to the council. And the last one, encourage your friends to join. Tina, you know that the local council is threatening to close the youth centre because not enough. Young people attend. I think that our area needs a youth centre. What do you think we can do to keep it open? Maybe we can make an announcement at the local schools so that young people know the importance of the center and the activities it offers. That's a great idea. I also think we should start a Facebook page for the youth center. I'm a member of the center so I can talk to the committee members and we can plan the page together. Yes, I agree, but you have to make sure that the page is attractive and informative for young people. What about suggesting new activities to attract members? There are many activities. First, arts and Crafts such as themed arts, cards and gifts, graffiti art, face painting, glass painting, hair braiding, mobiles, puppets, printing. I also have an idea. Games. We can have team games, non-competitive games, group games, team building games, puzzles and quizzes. We can write a letter to the council to urge them not to close the centre and provide details of the success of the centre. Let's attach signatures from all the youth in the area too. Looking at the number of members of the centre, last year there were only about 50 new members. I think we need to encourage our friends who are not members to join too. Dear students, let's move on to task 4. Write in pairs to discuss these questions. What can be done to help young people who are unemployed? Do you think it's more important for councils to spend money on services for young people than for elderly people or preschool children? Do you believe young people sometimes turn to crime because there isn't enough for them to do? And the last one, what can be done to help young people feel more included in society? 
Let's look at the language bank. Asking for clarification. You can use these phrases. Sorry, could you repeat that please? Could you say that again? So these are the two sentences for asking for clarification. I didn't quite understand what you said. I'm sorry, but I'm not sure what you meant. So remember, you can use these sentences to ask for clarification. What do you mean by? Can you explain why you sit? Millions of school youth are currently unemployed or underemployed. This number increases every year for various reasons. What can be done to help young people who are unemployed? Youth Employment Services is a great suggestion. These centres can link skills training with an employer and industry needs. The Youth Services Unit can do research and provide career counselling too. Employers used to train entry-level employees, allowing them to gain experience and climb the career ladder. But sadly today, employers favour outside hires with ready-to-go experience. This change has hurt young job seekers. It is best to reward employers who invest in on-the-job training with tax credits. Young entre entrepreneurs need coaching and networks to build job-creating businesses. Therefore, business leaders need to foster a culture of mentorship. There should be a training methodology for trainers and teachers to help young people become more entrepreneurial. Current apprenticeship systems need fixing too. There are still barriers to groups such as women, though the number of people entering apprenticeships has increased, too many never complete their training. Not enough employers view hiring an apprentice as an attractive investment. To increase the number of apprenticeships, educators need to give more information to students on career and skills education more. Teenagers turn first to their parents for career advice. So, parents need better information and more support. From schools to help their offspring make the right decisions, ministers of education should set targets for schools to deliver career education to parents. Let's decide on the two ideas that could be put into practice. I suggest schools need to deliver career education to parents and students. The idea of youth employment services is also good. Dear students, now we'll do the writing lesson. For writing lesson, today we are going to write letter. So this is communicating effectively. When you write to someone in authority about a problem, you're hoping that they will take action on suggestions you make in your letter. If you want the reader to react positively, you should write in a personal and polite way, saying how you feel about the problem, suggesting measures that should be taken and showing how they would help. Now, read this extract from letters to a town chief of police. Which one is written in the right tone and is most likely to get a good reaction? A. Last week's street demonstrations were policed really badly. Why didn't you have enough policemen to control what was happening? People were terrified. Make sure there are more of them there next time. B. Last week's street demonstrations made life in the town centre very frightening for many of us. I think that we should have more of your officers on duty next time, if possible, in order to make life safer for ordinary citizens. So, which one is written in the right tone and is most likely to get a good reaction? The answer is B. Task 2. Read this extract from a letter to the local mayor. What solution can you suggest? How would it help? It's dangerous outside the school at home time. Children run across the street, cars drive past too fast, and no one is in charge of what's happening. You can write, children should be taught on proper ways to leave the school after school ends, and the PTA members or workers can be hired to control the traffic. Dear students, now read this writing task and discuss in class what could be done and why it would help. The City Times The City Council recently published a report which reveals that many elderly people in a local nursing home are suffering from depression caused by boredom and loneliness. The Council says it will welcome ideas on what could be done by Council officers, officials and local people to help the situation. So the letter, write a letter to the Mayor explaining what could be done to help the elderly in the nursing home. Begin your letter, dear mayor.
Yes, students. Now let's look at the letter. Read the letter that was written in answer to task in 3 and answer the questions below. So, dear Mayor, I have just read in the local newspaper that many of our vulnerable elderly citizens in the city's nursing home are depressed. I think this is a very sad situation and I'm writing to ask that you urgently consider taking the following measures. First of all, the city council should employ an entertainment organiser at the home. Small music concerts, book readings and other events could be organised in order to stimulate the old people and hopefully make them smile. I'm sure you agree that laughter is often the best therapy. Furthermore, the council could organise outings. If coach excursions to famous landmarks or trips to the countryside were arranged, it would enable the elderly to experience the outside world again instead of sitting inside all day. Finally, with your agreement, my friends and I intend to arrange for volunteers to visit the home perhaps once a week so that the elderly have regular contact with other people. I look forward to seeing you put some ideas into action soon. Yours faithfully, Mary Clark. So let's look at the question. The first one is, is the writer tone of voice polite? So the answer is yes. What words does the writer use to sum up her opinion of the situation? So the answer is very sad. Number three, the writer talks directly to the mayor in the letter. Underline four examples of this. So here you have, I'm writing to ask that you urgently consider. I'm sure you agree that laughter is often the best therapy. And you also have, I look forward to seeing you put some idea into action soon. Then the, the writer suggests that three solutions to the problem. Circle the res, uh, results of these solutions. Okay. So the first one is in order to stimulate the old people and hopefully make them smile. The next one, it will enable the elderly to experience the outside world again instead of sitting inside all day. And the last one, so that the elderly have regular contact with other people. Dear students, when you write, try to use a broad range of vocabulary. Match these words to their meaning and use them to complete the text below. So number one, you have incident. Number two, vulnerable. Number three, prevent. Number four, deter. Number five, inadequate. Then you have the meanings here. Okay, the first one is a verb to stop something happening. B is an adjective, not enough. C adjective, unprotected. D verb to discourage people from doing something. And E noun, an event that happens. So what is an incident? Incident is a noun. It means an event that happens. Vulnerable is an adjective. It means unprotected. Prevent is a verb. It means to stop something happening. Deter is also a verb. It means to discourage people from doing something. And inadequate is an adjective. It means not enough. So let's look at number one. Here you have to use all these words in the text. Boy falls from hotel balcony. After the incident, police said that the protected railings around the balcony were inadequate. The hotel manager has now promised to improve them in order to prevent any other accidents. Let's look at uh, the next text for B. Hotel burglary. Thieves broke into the Grand Hotel yesterday and stole valuables from a room at the back of the hotel. A hotel spokesman said the room was vulnerable because it is dark at the back of the building. We are now installing powerful lighting in the garden area to deter thieves from trying again. Let's look at the language bank. So remember, you have a lot of words in the language bank. Let's look at the language bank now. First situation, serious incident, shocking, frightening. 
dangerous, inadequate, unprotected, and vulnerable. So these words or phrases are for situation. Next, useful verbs. Protect, deter, prevent, organize, arrange, authorize, enable, supply, and install. And then we have solutions. Urgent or urgently, suitable or adequate, if possible, I'm sure you agree that. Take measures or take action, put ideas into action. Let's look at the download notes. Think about your reader's reaction when you write your letter. You want them to agree with your ideas, so talk to them directly and be polite. Showing the results of your suggestions will help convince them that you're right. When you learn new words, practice using them in your writing. Dear students, now read this writing task and use the plan and the language bank to help you write your letter. Try to use some of the words you practice in 5. When you finish your letter, check your work carefully. So here the city times, fear on the streets. A woman was slightly injured last night when a thief knocked her down and stole her purse as she walked home. Bystanders said they would not be able to recognize the mugger again because the street was very dark. Many citizens have previously complained that there are not enough late night buses operating in the city. So letter, write a letter to the mayor explaining what could be done to make the city safer at night for pedestrians. Begin your letter, dear mayor. So the first one, let's look at the plan, paragraph one. Say you have read about mugging. Give your opinion and say why you're writing. Paragraph 2, 3 and 4 make suggestions to help solve the problem using examples if appropriate and showing what the results would be. And for the last paragraph, paragraph 5, show you expect the reader to take action. Anita Lee, 35 Jalan Harapan 12, Taman Harapan, 70,300 Seremban, Negri Sembalan, The Mayor, Seremban City Council, Jalan Aberdeen, 70,100 Seremban, Negri Sembalan, the 17th of July 2021. Dear Mayor, Safer City at Night. I'm writing to express the problem of safety in the city of Seremban, especially at night. Recently, I read in the Star newspaper dated the 16th of July 2021 that a woman was slightly injured when a thief knocked her down and stole her purse as she was walking home. I wish to suggest what could be done to make the city safer at night for pedestrians. The first suggestion is to install more street lights, especially in secluded places like car parking lots and also small lanes. The lights will brighten up the dim areas and help pedestrians to be aware of strangers lurking in the area and bystanders can also recognize the criminals. In addition, the city council can hire more workers to patrol areas which are identified as hotspots for mugging. With more workers, the rotation will prevent work stress and also provide more job opportunities in the city. Last but not least, there should be more campaigns to inform the public about crime cases in the city and ways to safeguard themselves, especially pedestrians. Posters, social media advertisements and announcements are very effective ways to convey this message. I am sure you agree that immediate actions need to be taken and the city of Seremban should be known as a safe town, especially at night. Yours faithfully, Anita Lee. Dear students, now let's look at the reload and progress review. For the reload exercise, scan the QR code here to answer. The questions are in a Google form. And then for the progress review, Remember that you have to answer in the Google form and later on you can see your answers. Dear students, remember to answer all the exercises for reload and also progress review using the given Google form. You can assess your ability to answer these exercises. So, what score do you get? Dear students, Thank you for watching this video. So this is the end of Unit 12. Hopefully you have benefited from all the videos from Unit 1 to Unit 12. And do remember to subscribe to my channel. It is called Educator OmniTube. I'm Madam Gun signing off. Bye.